Welcome back everyone to my talk on monotheism. These were the Almaka temples that I discussed previously. They were in Ethiopia, Abyssinia back in the day, and of course there were equivalent temples in Yemen because this was one culture, one civilization, one religion. Notice it says here that in front of the building was a platform with six pillars. The Kaaba originally had six pillars inside it. It now has three. The original Kaaba had six pillars inside it, just like this ancient Babylonian worship of the god Sin had temples with six pillars. Note here, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pillars with seven gaps. These are gateways between the secular and the holy. So once you go through these gaps, these are seven pathways, seven prayers. Notice this one, same religion, has one, two, three, four, five, six pillars. Of course, this one's broken. Five gaps, five daily prayers. Understand, there seems to be some kind of correlation here. This is the paper that I spoke of previously by Indy Morris. It's called Mecca and Makaraba. Recommended reading if you want to get into the topic. It provides a great deal of very, very helpful information, perspectives. And then I also want to introduce Nabatea.net. If I recall, this is the website by Dan Gibson. And this article, Suggested Solutions for Issues Concerning the Arabian Maps in Ptolemy's Geography. A couple of elements here that I want to bring to your attention. Ptolemy never visited most of the sites listed in the geography, so he had to rely on merchants and provide descriptions. Thus, the accuracy is questionable, as we discussed previously. Now, mistakes or inventions told him by merchants and travelers became standard features on future European maps based on Ptolemy. So these mistakes carried forward. So it's taken some time to unravel all of this and eventually create accurate maps. Many of the names Ptolemy lists are obscured because they are written as the Greeks knew them or heard them, not as they might have been called in their original language, such as Arabic in the Middle East. Now, the reason I bring this up is as follows. We're going to see terms like the Karab El. Now, El doesn't necessarily refer to Yahweh, the god Yahweh, the Israeli Jewish Christian god. El also meant a deity, a major deity. Right? So this could be Baal, this could be al Maka, right? Maka, the moon god Sin, right, of Babylon, who became the same god of the major pantheon of Yemen. You'll see terms like Karab El, right, which is really short for the Karab Baal, in this case, Karab Baal, Karab Baal. We'll see things like Mu Karibba, right? Mu implies one who does what follows in the next word, one who carries out the instructions. The Karab Baal, we've seen a few references to Karab, Karab Baal. Mu Karibba becomes Makaraba within the Greek, as it gets transferred into the Greek language, sounds change. The Yemeni term Karab became the Arab term Abd al-Malik. So this term eventually superseded and replaced the term Mukarib. I believe there was an attempt to get away from the Yemeni roots. There are hints towards Yemen within the Hadiths, within the Quran, and so on. But this does seem to be a major source of these beliefs, as we discussed already. But there's an attempt to minimize these connections to Yemen. But the Muqarib was a warrior priest king. Muhammad was a warrior priest king. In fact, a warrior priest emperor is what these people were. The Abd al-Malik was a warrior priest emperor. Notice though that we do see lots of references to Abd al-Malik went to Jerusalem and there's a reference to a particular Abd al-Malik from I think 685 to 705 in that period, but it's a title, it's not a name. Abd al-Malik is a title. The Muqarib is a title. Muqarib is like saying Caesar. Abd al-Malik is like saying Caesar. When I say Caesar, which Caesar do I mean? Everyone's going to go Julius Caesar because that's the one you associate with Caesar. But there were 12 Caesars, just as there were numerous Abd al-Maliks. There were numerous Muqaribs. We have many of these Abd al-Maliks. We had many of these Muqaribs. One who carries out the will of the deity, Muqarabal, is the Muqarib of Baal, one who carries out the will of Baal. And you'll see Karabal, Karabili, we've seen this come up regularly. Keep this in mind, 
because Charles Forrester comments the modulation for the sake of euphony and some of the Arabic consonants by the Greeks and Romans, for instance, the substitution of the Greek theta for the Arabic dal. So when they transliterated from one language into another, they altered the sounds, altered the spellings. So the root is still there, the idea is still there, but you've got now got these different letters. So this would account for some of the changes that occur. As thamata for dama, thaba for dahban. These look almost completely different, but they're the same word. Theba for teba, deba, thawan for dawan. There is the change of the S and the T for D. As safar for dafar, tamala for aldemlu. Understand? So sometimes these disparate looking words actually are identical, which is why I state that mukaraba and makoraba are identical. Mukaraba, makoraba. This is simply this word transliterated into the Greek or the Roman. Then you've got the S exchange for the Z, a Sibi or Sisipi for Zebed, Port Zebed, Sibi, Sisipi, Zebed. You wouldn't know unless you went to do the research that these are the same terms. Or the Greek Pi for the Arabic Ba, Pi for Ba, as Safar for Sabr, or the N for the L. The Arabic termination of In for the Hebrew L is not an unusual change. And that's from Charles Forrester, The Historical Geography of Arabia, Volume 1. Hopefully this is enlightening, useful. So let me get to our presentation. So the Sabaeans, a little bit of historical context. The Sabaeans carried out trade by land and by sea, leading to massive growth from the 18th century BC onwards. They established colonies along the Red Sea and Ethiopia. They had highly lucrative spice trade, especially frankincense and myrrh. The Sabaeans lived in the lands of Sheba as regional monarchies. The first king was Karab al -Bayin. Karabal, Karab, Mukarab, Mukaraba, because the plural of the Karabs is the Mukarabs, Mukaraba, Mukaraba, ruling during the 700 to 800 BC period. And this is the Karabal, Karab El, the root Karab El, Karabal Bayan. Note that Karabi Ilu, when you came across this term in the previous episode, we discussed him, was a Mukarab of the Sabah region in 700 to 680 BC. The name Karibi Ilu in Akkadian matches Karabal Bayan in Sabaean. So Karibi Ilu, Karabal Bayan. Again, there are differences here, but they're the same term. Go to another language, the term changes, even though it's the same. So it's combined of Karabal, which means one who carries out the instructions of El, your deity, and Ben or Bayan, one who removes punishment. So this is a representative of the deity on earth. He's a warrior, priest, king. This is a concept that is only found within Islam now. Now, Saba was best known in context of the story of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. This is a separate story. We're not going to go into that. And various writers have also cited the Sabaeans in their narratives, right? From the Assyrians to the Greeks and the Romans in the 8th century. Saba is mentioned twice in Quran 27 and Quran 34. And as people of Tubba, Kaum Tubba, in Quran 44 and Quran 50. Now, Mekrab, Makrab, Mekrab, 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 Makrab, Makrab, Mukarab. Understand the similarities here, the linguistic similarities, even the slight spelling similarities. But look at the sounds, right? M, Q, B, M, R, B, M, K, hard C, Q. And also the Yemeni Q becomes an Arabic K. Maqa becomes Maqa. Again, slight changes in the language, but still consistency. Now, the what? Mikrab, Mikrab, Makarab the what? Mikrab, plural, Maharib. The prayer niche in the mosque, indicating the direction of prayer, is made up of an arch, supporting columns. We just saw supporting columns earlier. These doorways between the columns. That was your doorway into the sacred, into the holy. And the space between them, ah, notice they recognize the space between them, the space between them, that's where you go through, that's where you enter through. And because you cannot enter into the sublime yourself, you send prayers. Within a flat or reset form, it gives the impression of a door or a doorway. And here's a mihrab. Now, the Kaaba, outside of the standard Islamic narrative, nothing is known of its history. There's speculation, very little is known of its history. The only reason for presuming the Kaaba was in existence in the second century AD is the mention of Mecca as Makaraba by Ptolemy. This is said in the Encyclopedia of Islam, Volume 4. This is an error. 
Now, I've already discussed that error in the previous slide on Bochart in 1646 to correct this error. The very earliest reference to Mecca being Makaraba was by this person, Bochart, in 1646. It is not present on Ptolemy's maps. Ptolemy refers to Mecca in terms of, or Makaraba, my apologies. Ptolemy refers to Makaraba as a temple, as a holy place, as an altar. In a concise encyclopedia of Islam by Parinder, little is known of the, of the history of the Kaaba outside Islamic tradition, but there's reason to believe that the shrine was an active pilgrimage site as early as the second century. The geographer Ptolemy calls the city Makaraba with the significance of Mekrab, or temple. Makaraba, now obviously he associates Mecca with Makaraba, but understand Ptolemy never made the connection. This was made by Bahar, and everyone else just assumed that that was something said by Ptolemy. So they're referring to the 1646 idea without going back further and checking that that's actually not the case. But however, Ptolemy does refer to this in context of a mikrab, of a temple. So mikrab is temple. So now you've got a connection between mikrab, makaraba, and the mukaraba. So it seems that these all have a similar function, a similar function within these words, similar sound, meaning, and so on. Mecca, known to the ancient geographers as makaraba and to the Arabs as maka. The name Makaraba means temple in various Semitic languages, and this probably referred to the Kaaba. Glazer believes this name may have signified the same as South Arabian or Ethiopian Mikrab, or temple. Makaraba. Okay, so now you've got a scholar, major scholar, saying that Holland, Makaraba seems to be related to the term Mikrab, and Mikrab is Ethiopian. Again, we know that this oldest temple was in Ethiopia. as we opened with in the series. And in modern Islamic usage, mikhrab means pranish. Notice the propylon here at the fake entrance, the faux entrance. This is a common feature of mikhrabs. It is also a common feature of the worship of the Babylonian moon god Sin, who in Yemen was known as Makkah.